So this is the second part of the previous lecture, adding forces. When we have more than one force and we need to find the net force, the net force, for all these forces or the forces on the object, we need to draw all the forces acting on the object. Then we add these forces as vectors. We need to add them as vectors. And then if we need to get uh, to get uh, the acceleration as we will know today inshallah in the next part of the lecture we will apply new, new, newton's second law so how to add forces together how to add the forces together if the forces are in the same direction so we add them normally like algebraically no problem like if we have two newton and three newton we add them and the net force will be five newton okay that's normal what if the two forces are opposite in direction? Like I have here a 10 Newton and opposite to it is 2 Newton. So in this case, we subtract the two forces. And, and the Newton. direction of the net force will be, in the, will be in the direction right. of the big one. Okay, guys? So please use the chat if you want to answer any question. Use the chat, not the mic, please. So I have here 10 Newton to the right and 2 Newton to the left. So 10 minus 2 is 8 Newton. That's right. What if we have two perpendicular, two perpendicular forces? One of them is 3 Newton to the right, that is 4 Newton upward. How to get the result? We cannot add Five 3 newton. plus 4 7. 5 Newton. Yes, please don't use the microphone and use the chat. So you are recording the lecture, guys. You are recording the lecture. Thank you. So three Newton to the right and four Newton upward. Okay. So we need to complete a triangle. We need to complete a triangle. Okay. So the triangle to get the net force, the net force we will use Pythagoras rule, it will be five Newton. You know this rule, when there is three and four, the hypotenuse will be four, five. So that's how we add the forces together to get the net force. If you find the net force to be zero, if the net force is zero, that means the forces, we call them balanced forces, balanced forces. And the object in this case, we call it under equilibrium. We say that this object is under equilibrium. Equilibrium in engineering means it is in. So the object is under equilibrium. But if the net force is not zero, we call these forces unbalanced forces. Unbalanced forces. And in this case, this object has an acceleration. In this case, the object will have an acceleration. So again, if the net force is zero, we call them balanced forces, and the object is under equilibrium. And equilibrium means what? It means the acceleration is zero. There is no acceleration. There is no acceleration. And this also means two cases. It might be the object is at rest, doesn't move. Okay, or the object moves with a constant velocity. The object moves with a constant velocity or a constant speed in a straight line. Okay, so when the forces or the net force is zero, that's balanced forces, there is no acceleration. And no acceleration means either the object is at rest or the object moves with a constant velocity. But if the net force is not zero, that means these forces, we call them unbalanced forces, and there, there must be an acceleration here. There will be an acceleration. Okay. Uh, let's see these examples. The first object subjected to four forces. The four forces, the 15 and 15, they cancel each other, and the up and down forces, they cancel each other, so the net force here is zero. That's right. And for the second one also, 25 and 25 opposite to each other. 
so the net force is zero so the two objects here are under equilibrium okay or under balanced forces so we can we can say that they have zero acceleration the zero acceleration okay the other two objects here i have 10 to the right and 15 to the left so the net force in this case hmm. Uh, five, as Abdullah says, five west, or I can say negative five newton, negative five newton, or five to the west. Okay, so for the second case, I have 60 to the right and 45 to the left, so the net force will be 15 to the right or positive 15. Okay, okay, let's move to the second part of the lecture. So the second part is Newton's laws of motion. Newton's laws of motion, That's section 3.2. We will know what are the three laws of Newton's. Newton's first law, Newton's second law, Newton's third law. Let's start with Newton's first law. Let's say you are driving your car, or if it is a small car like a toy this car and the car has a box in front of or on the top of it there is a box this red box it's not attached to the car it's just above the car on the top of the car and the car has a constant speed constant speed so the box also will have the same speed the box will have the same speed as a car but what if there is an obstacle like one like this piece of wood so the car will have an accident with this box or this piece of wood and it will stop okay in a, an instant or in a moment it will stop so what will happen to the box on the top of the car the box we notice that it will try to continue moving the box tries to continue its movement. Why is that? What is this phenomena? This phenomena is called the inertia. Inertia. Al qusur al dhati. The inertia is what? What is the inertia? Inertia is a tendency of the object to resist any change in its motion. Okay? Or I would say its resistance. It's the resistance to change the status of the object. If the object is moving, so the object tries to continue its movement. It doesn't like anybody to stop it. It will resist you if you try to stop it. Okay? That's why if there is a moving object, if there is an, uh, a moving object, and you try to stop this object, you need to apply a force. You need to do some effort because the object will resist you this resistance is called the inertia also if there is an object is at rest and you try to move this object you try to change the status of the object you try to push it you also need some force because the object tries to resist your trial to move it this is also the same which is the inertia the inertia depends on what it depends on the mass so the higher the mass, the higher the inertia. Okay? The higher the mass, the higher the resistance, the higher the inertia. Okay? This is related to Newton's first law, which is sometimes we call it the law of inertia. What is Newton's first law? He says what?
Okay, guys, it looks like we lost the connection for some time. Can you hear me right now? Hello? Yes, we can. Okay, good. So, Newton's first law says what? An object at rest stays at rest. And also, an object in motion will continue its motion. So, if it is at rest, it stays. It likes to stay at rest. Okay, and if it is in motion, it likes to stay in motion. So it will continue its motion, but what it is train with constant speed, which we can say it, it continues its motion with constant velocity. The object continues its motion with constant velocity. Unless what? This will continue forever unless an unbalanced force acts on it. So unless an unbalanced force acts on it. What's the meaning of un unbalanced force? A net force not equal to zero. Like there is a force. So the object at rest stays at rest. The object in motion will continue its motion until an external force or a non-zero force affects on the object and changes its status. This is the Newton's first law or, or the law of inertia. Okay, guys, Newton's second law, Newton's second law. When an unbalanced force, again, what's the meaning of unbalanced force? It means the net force, not zero. When an unbalanced force, like a, a certain amount of force, acts on an object, it will do what? It will produce an acceleration. So if you apply with a force and the net force over the object is not zero, the net force will produce an acceleration in the same direction of the force. So the direction of acceleration must be in the same direction of the net force. The magnitude of the acceleration is what? Of course, if you increase the force, this will increase the magnitude of acceleration. So this is what we call the acceleration is directly proportional to force. The rest of Tardi, directly proportional. We write it mathematically. Acceleration is directly proportional to the force. And also the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. If you increase the mass, it will be hard or it will be difficult for the force to give it a big acceleration. So if you increase uh, the mass, you will have smaller acceleration. So we call it the mass is inversely proportional or the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass, the mass of axi. We write it mathematically as acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. We write it in this way, inversely proportional. So Newton has studied these issues, okay, these issues, and write down his famous equation, the force equals mass times acceleration. The force equals mass times acceleration. So the force here is a vector, and the acceleration is a vector, and they must be in the same direction, okay? The unit of is kilogram, the unit of acceleration is meter per second square. So mass times acceleration will be kilogram meter per second square, which we call it the Newton, Newton. So the unit of force is Newton, which is kilogram meter per second square. If he's lo looking for F, so F equals mass times acceleration. If you are looking for the acceleration, the acceleration is the force divided by the mass. Okay, guys? Do you have any question here? Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law of motion. When an object exerts a force on a second object, like we have two objects, one of them exerts a force. Exert means يبذل. Okay? أو يعمل. Exerts a force on the second object. The second object exerts the same amount of force. The same amount of force on the first, but 
in opposite direction in opposite direction we call it the action and reaction الفعل ورد الفعل give me examples like you are let's say you are sitting or you let's say you are uh, standing on the ground okay so you apply your weight your force now is your weight which is downward so the ground also applies an opposite force upward which we call it the normal force or the normal reaction which we studied last time okay so you have your weight downward this is the action and the reaction is the normal force or the normal reaction the same let's say there is a wall and let's say you are trying to push the wall i don't know why but let's say you are trying to push the wall that's you okay because there is a quiz so you are trying to push the wall so you apply a force F, okay on the wall so the wall pushes you back with the same amount of force okay with the same amount of force so you apply a force if the wall will apply the same amount of force like 100 newton the the wall also uh, pushes you back with the same 100 newton opposite to direction okay so we can find this third law in many cases many many cases okay while you are sitting on your chair you apply your weight on the chair the chair applies a force okay which is the normal force upward that's the reaction or the normal force okay guys if we have an object that's moving under a force and we need to find the acceleration how to do that at the beginning we draw all the forces acting on the object then we add all the forces together as we learned at the beginning of this lecture to find the net force then we apply newton's second law the net force equals the mass times acceleration okay this case for example an object that's pulling not pushing an object like this box and you try to pull it with a force f so what are the forces acting on the box there is the external force your force that you apply and it doesn't need to be horizontal sometimes in some cases it may it, it may have an angle it will be inclined okay but let's say here in this problem it's horizontal to the right so this is the pull force there is the weight a weight is always downward the weight equals mass times gravity there is the normal force or the normal reaction in which direction perpendicular to the surface there is the friction if the surface is rough rough fashion if the surface is rough so there is a friction in which direction is the friction friction is up to the motion so if the box moves to the right the friction will be to the left let's see another case let's say you have a book and you try to push the book against the wall for, for what reason i don't know but you are doing that right now there is a book and you push it against the wall what are the forces acting on the book huh? your force your external force if there is the weight and the weight is downward mg mass times gravity there is a normal force or normal reaction in which direction perpendicular to the wall 90 degree perpendicular to the wall okay there is a friction in which direction opposite to the motion like if you put the book in this uh, orientation or in this position it tends to move down so the friction will be opposite to the motion it will be upward this is a friction direction you have an incline 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 and you have a box that is sliding ينزلق, okay down the incline what are the forces here the weight downward and please don't draw it perpendicular to the 
to the incline. No, it's downward. Equals mass times gravity. What else? We have the normal force. Normal force, it's not upward. Normal force is perpendicular, perpendicular to the incline. The incline moves sides downward, so the friction will be upward. The friction is upward or up the incline, not upward, up the incline. Okay. If there is an object, let's say like a note or a book or whatever box, is falling down. It is falling down. Thamer asks, the friction force is always opposite? Yes. It's opposite to the motion. So any box is moving on the ground, the friction is opposite to the motion. The last one is some box or a book is falling down. So we have two forces here. We have the weight, mass times gravity, and we have the air resistance upward. Okay, in some problems we might neglect, sometimes we neglect the air resistance. Okay, which we call it the free fall. Free fall. The free fall, we neglect air resistance. But normally, if we consider it, so we have to take care of the air resistance, it's <clears throat> opposite to the direction of motion. Opposite to the direction of motion. Okay, air resistance is similar to the friction. Similar to the friction. Opposite to the direction of motion. Okay, guys? So if, if you throw the object upward, if you throw this object upward, so you will find what? The weight downward and the air resistance also downward. That's if the object is moving up. Okay, but here, bow, uh, block, fall. It falls down. Okay. So the air resistance here is upward. Let's try to solve this problem together. Two horizontal forces acting on a 2.5 kilogram box. This is the mass. Calculate the box's acceleration. When you see such a problem, you need to establish axes, like x axis. And you need to know which one is positive and which one is negative. So I have a positive force, I have a negative force. Negative and positive. Then calculate the net force. 12 minus 1.2, 10.8 Newton. Okay. Then we need to calculate what? We need to calculate the acceleration. I know that the net force equals mass times acceleration. So the acceleration equals the net force divided by the mass. What is the net force? 10.8. 10.8 divided by 2.5. The result is what? Hmm. 4.32. 4.32 meter per second square. In which direction? It's positive, so it's to the right. The acceleration is to the right, which is the same direction as the net force. <clears throat> Four forces are acting on a box. As shown in this figure, the net force on the box produces an acceleration one meter per second square. What is the mass of the box? Also, I will use this x direction and this is y direction and here i have two directions for the force x and y so i will calculate net force in the x direction and net force in the y direction what is the net force in the x i have here positive 2 and negative 5 so 2 minus 5 is negative 3 newton Negative 3 means the net force is to the left or to the west. In the y direction, I have positive 3 upward and negative 3 downward. So 3 minus 3 is 0 newton. So I only have the net force in the x direction. So negative 3 equals the mass time is acceleration. The acceleration here has a magnitude of 1. 
but it has direct the same direction as the net force so the acceleration also is to the left so it will be negative one meter per second square because it has as I said before the acceleration and the net force they must have the same direction so the direction of acceleration here also is negative so negative one so negative goes with the negative so the mass equals to three kilogram some people they might ask what if there is a net force in the y direction I th I, you might think of this issue what if there's a net force what shall i do let's see uh, is there a question first turkey do you have a question no okay yes yes go ahead hey tabella ma fahamtish bete let me go okay let me let me tell you the other part and i think you will understand it what if there is a horizontal force and a vertical force what can you do you calculate the x direction and it's negative three in the y direction let's assume there is only one force upward and there is no three newton here it's only upward force equals two three so it's three newton what can you do here that means there is the net force has two parts three newton to the right to the left sorry and three newton upward so you need to calculate the net force as we said before to complete the triangle from pythagoras rule so the net force the root of three square plus three square that's root 18 which is around four point what Hmm? root 18 4.24 4.24 newton so this is the net force in this case in this case this is the net force and you see, you, you should say that the net force equals mass times acceleration so 4.24 equals mass times acceleration and the magnitude of acceleration is one so the mass will be 4.24 over one gives you 4.24 kilogram okay take care in this case the acceleration direction is in the same like the, the net force so the acceleration equals one in the same direction in the same direction so if there is an angle theta here the acceleration has the same angle the same angle okay so do you have any question now hmm? okay two blocks of different masses 10 kilogram and 20 kilogram 10 kilogram and 20 kilogram are connected by a light probe light Probe has no mass on a frictionless surface as in the figure below. An applied force of 60 Newton, this force, you apply a pull, 60 Newton force to the right, causes the blocks to accelerate. Causes which block to accelerate, the 10 or the 20? <clears throat> both of them, both of them. So both of them will have the same acceleration because they are attached to the same rope the rope in the middle finds the acceleration of the 20 kilogram block so he's now cheating you and says find the acceleration of the 20 you might think that the acceleration of the 20 is different from the acceleration of 10 no the acceleration of the 20 or the acceleration of the 10 kilogram or the acceleration of both they are the same okay how to solve such a problem if we have two connected masses? I will deal with them and mass as one big one big mass. With a big mass equals to what? To 30 kilogram, 10 plus 20. So I will consider them one big mass and I pull them with a 60 Newton. 
So what are the forces acting on this mass? Of course, there is a weight. Mass times gravity. And there will be a normal force and friction. Here he says frictionless surface. Frictionless means there is no friction. So there is no friction. And the, the, ma the weight and the normal force are equal. So they cancel each other. They cancel each other. So the left over here is the 60 Newton. This is affecting the affecting force. So net force, let me write it on a side here. The net force equals the total mass times the acceleration. So 60, positive 60, equals to the equals to the 30 times acceleration so easily the acceleration equals two meter per second this is acceleration of what of any one of them of both this one two meter per second square and this one also two meter per second square they will move together like a train the train all of the cars of the train they have the same the same speed and the same acceleration okay do you have any question here? If you don't have a question, so I can ask another question. Let me ask another question in this problem. There is a rope in the middle in between the two masses. What is the force of, the, of in this rope? Let's call it P. Let's call this force P. What is the force in this rope? What do you think, guys? Hmm. What is the force in the rope? Hmm. Is it 10? Zero? 30? Huh? Do you have any other solution? 60? So we have 60, we have 10, we have 30, we have zero. <laughs> okay okay let's try to do it 15 mashallah there is a new one here okay okay enough actually it's none of them none of them let's see i can get this force p if i study the object the 20 kilogram object or or the 10 kilogram object i might study the 20 kilogram or the 10 kilogram both of them will give me the same answer how is that i will draw the 20 kilogram the 20 kilogram gram is pulled by this rope which has a force p right and its acceleration, we just get it, 2 meter per second square. Of course, there is uh, uh, friction. Here he says frictionless surface, so there is no friction. There is weight, and there is normal force. But they cancel each other. They are equal, so I don't need them. So I will apply Newton's second law. The net force equals this mass times its acceleration. Okay, so the net force is P equals this mass is 20 kilogram. Its acceleration is 2, so the force P equals 40 Newton. 40 Newton. Okay, guys, you might ask me how, how can you get it from the other object? The same, the same way exactly. We will draw the force diagram or the free body diagram on the 10 kilogram mass. I have a force to the right, which is 60 Newton. Because you pull it to the right with 60 Newton. But also the other object pulls it back. The 20 kilogram, it pulls it back with the force P. So it's like this, 
uh, object is subjected to two forces. One is pulling the object to the right by 60, and the other pulled with a force P, which I don't know what is it. Okay. But I know the acceleration is 2 meter per second square. Apply the same equation. Net force equals mass times acceleration. What is the net force in this case? The 60 to the right minus P because it's to the left. Equals the mass of the object is 10 kilogram. The acceleration is 2. 10 minus 2, 10 minus 2 is 20. So 60 minus P is 20. Huh? What's P? P is, so P is 40 Newton. The same answer exactly, the same answer. So if you get it from the this object, which is easy actually, okay, you will get the same answer as if you get it from the second object. What does this mean? It means that this 60 Newton is distributed over the two objects. The small object will take will take 20 Newton of them. And the second object, the big object, will take 40 Newton of them. Okay. The 20 Newton will give this object an acceleration of 2. 20 equals 10 times 2. So it will need 20 Newton to accelerate it. The second object will need 40 Newton because it's bigger. So to give it the same acceleration, it will need more force. Okay, so it will need 40 Newton. The 40 Newton will give it the same acceleration because 40 equals 20 kilogram times the 2 meter per second square. Okay, so this is how the 60 Newton is distributed over the two objects. You have any question here, guys? Any question? A car is rolling over the top hill at a constant speed v. So this car is moving on the hill at a constant speed v, as shown in the figure. If n is pushing force, if n is the pushing force of the ground, which is actually the what? The normal force. This is the normal force of the ground. And W is the weight. W is the weight. Mass times gravity. Which of the following statements is true? The relation between W and N. Is W bigger than N or W smaller than N or W equals to N or no? Actually, if the object is moving on a flat road, like a straight road, the weight the n will be equal. W equals to n. If if it is a straight or a flat road. But now you are moving on a curve. If you are moving on a curve, that's not right. That's not right. Why is that? Because there is something else, if you remember, uh, it was the centripetal acceleration. There is an acceleration. This acceleration is induced because you move in a circle. Where is the direction of acceleration? It's toward the center of the curve. The center is here. So the acceleration will be downward. This is the centripetal acceleration. So I need to apply Newton's second law if net equals mass times the centripetal acceleration. In this case, take care that we need the positive direction because here we have Three quantity we have an acceleration, we have a weight, and we have a normal force. The acceleration is downward because it's toward the center. The weight is downward normally, but the normal force is upward. So when we write down this equation, we need a positive direction to tell us which direction is the positive one and which one is the negative one. You can choose the upward to be your positive, or you can choose the downward to be your positive. It's up to you. You can choose whatever you want. But if you choose the word to be your positive, the N will be positive, the weight will be negative, and the acceleration will be negative because they are downward. That's why I don't like to do it this way. 
But it's better if you take the acceleration direction to be your positive direction. So my positive direction is downward. So I have the acceleration downward, so the acceleration is positive. I have the weight downward, so the weight is positive. I have the normal force is upward, so the normal force is negative. So let's apply these stuff in our equation. So F net, the net force, the net force. I have the weight is a force. It's positive because it's downward. I have the normal force or the normal reaction. It's a force, but it's negative. So I will make it negative. N minus W equals mass times acceleration. The acceleration here is downward, so it's positive according to the uh, positive direction that I took here. So W minus N, W minus N equals mass times acceleration. So you can write it as W equals N plus mass times acceleration. Or in other words, W equals N plus something. Whatever this thing is. So which one is bigger? W or N? W equals N plus something. Like 10 equals 7 plus whatever, plus 3. So of course, W is bigger than N. So this is the right answer. This is the right answer. Okay? Or as Muayyad says, W minus N is greater than 0. That's right. Take care of something. That if you are at the bottom, the bottom of this hill or at a valley or at the bottom of a circle, it will be the opposite. The answer will be the opposite. Why? Because if you are at the bottom, if you are at the bottom here, if your car at the bottom, you have the weight downward and you have the normal force upward. But the center, the center of the circle, the center will be upward. So the acceleration also will be upward. So I will take the positive sense to be upward. So the acceleration is positive and the normal force is positive, but the weight is negative. So I will apply the, the uh, net force equals mass times acceleration. So here N minus W equals the mass times acceleration. So in this case, N is bigger than W. So again, if you have those three cases, case number one, case number two, case number three. Case number one, you are at the top of the hill. So I found that the weight is greater than the normal force. You are moving on a flat road. They are equal. You are at the top or at the bottom of a valley or whatever. In this case, the normal force is greater than the weight. Okay, guys? So these are the three cases. That's everything today. Thank you for watching this lecture. If you have a question, ask.